Welcome, and thank you for joining us this evening for our second of several informational open house meetings on the Puyallup School District Capital Levy Proposition. This meeting is being recorded and will be available tomorrow on our website if you'd like to, uh, to view it or share the information with uh, friends and family. Uh, my name is John Palm, and I'm superintendent of Puyallup School District. And joining me this evening are uh, Bob Horton, a Puyallup Education Association president, Laura Marco, assistant superintendent of business and support services, Margaret Larkey, uh, executive director of technology, and Brady Martin, director of capital projects. And you can see from the agenda on this slide that we will be sharing detailed information about elements of the capital levy proposition as well as answering questions posed in the chat. In order to pose a question, please submit your question via the private chat feature at any time, and questions will be answered at the end of the presentation during our Q&A session. Please include your email at the end of your quest question so that we can follow up in writing um, if we don't get to your question during the session. We have an hour today, so we started at six, we'll be ending at 7 p.m. I'd like to start with just a few uh, facts about the school district. Uh, we are the third oldest district in the state of Washington, founded in 1854. We have uh, grown from a one-room schoolhouse to a district of almost 23,000 students and 3,700 uh, staff members. We currently are the eighth largest uh, school district in the state of Washington. And also, I'd like to share that a recent Forbes magazine article uh, ranking the top 50 places to work in the Washington state included three school districts and uh, Puyallup was a top rated school district on the list. Uh, we serve a very large area, including communities of Edgewood, Puyallup, South Hill, um, and surrounding in unincorporated areas of Pierce County. Like I say, my, my roles here at the, the district are a superintendent, as I mentioned, but also um, very vested here in the community, uh, owning a home and also have grandchildren attending our school district. Now on to the levy. Um, we have a short video for you that provides an overview of the capital levy. After the video, then we'll hear from um, myself and other panelists who have information to share, including specifics about region two, which is our focus this evening. Puyallup School District is asking voters to consider a capital levy on the November 8th general election ballot. This short video will provide information on what the capital levy would fund, highlights of some of the projects that would be completed, and tax information. Proposition 1 is a six-year, $125 million capital levy to provide needed infrastructure improvements not funded by the state that address safety, security, and technology access throughout PSD schools and facilities. Now let's take a look at some of the areas that would be funded by the capital levy. If approved, the capital levy would fund five areas in critical need of repairs and improvements. With a heavy focus on safety and security, 43% of the capital levy funding would go toward keeping schools and facilities safe and secure. Secure vestibules provide enhanced security at schools by preventing access to schools without checking in at the main office. Without secure vestibules, individuals have access to school hallways and classrooms once through the main entrance. Outdated security and life safety systems would be replaced with modern and effective systems to protect students, staff, and property. Aging and failing heating, cooling, and ventilation systems would be repaired or replaced to improve air quality, comfort, and system efficiency. The second area of focus is on technology improvements. 28% of the capital levy would be used on educational technology and internet access improvements to help schools stay current with changing technology. This helps ensure that educational tools stay connected and in the hands of students and staff and less time being repaired or replaced. The third area of focus is on building improvements. 12% of the capital levy would be used to provide building improvements that help maintain safe and conducive learning spaces. Aging and degraded roofs would be repaired and replaced to address water leakage and other deficiencies. Flooring repairs and replacement would address cracking and damaged flooring in schools. Plumbing repairs and improvements would also be funded. The fourth area of focus for the capital levy is on outdoor learning spaces. 10% of the capital levy would support improvements to outdoor spaces that support student activities, play, and athletics. 
Replacing dirt and clay tracks that are prone to ponding, puddling, and mud with all-weather tracks supports safe year-round use for students in PE and athletics. Replacing old playground equipment and wood chip infill with new equipment and rubber tiles ensures safe and inclusive play for all ages. The fifth and final area that would be supported by the capital levy is school site improvements to ensure safe access to schools. Dirt and rock pathways at schools that are prone to puddling and mud would be replaced with asphalt walkways for year-round use. School parking lots and traffic flow improvements would also be addressed to increase safety and decrease congestion during student drop-offs and pickups. If approved, the capital levy would cost approximately $23 a month for a home assessed at $500,000. This would keep our school tax rate lower than it has historically been, as well as remain lower than the school tax rates of most neighboring districts. Additional capital levy information can be found on our website at puyallup.k12.wa.us slash election. And don't forget to vote by November 8th. We'll have a little bit more information, obviously, about the specifics on the capital levy in a, in a few minutes. But before that, I would like to introduce our a longtime Puyallup School District teacher and coach, and currently uh, serving as Puyallup Education Association president, Mr. Bob Horton. Uh, thank you, Dr. Palm, for that introduction. Uh, and good evening, everyone. Um, as Dr. Palm said, my name is Bob Horton. And I'm the, currently the president of the Puyallup Education Association. Uh, I represent more than 1,500 certified educators in the district. Those, those educators include classroom teachers, elementary, junior high, and high school librarians, music teachers, physical education teachers, counselors, nurses, speech and language pathologists, occupational therapists, physical therapists, psychologists, audiologists, behavior specialists, uh, social workers, instructional coaches, and our new social and emotional learning teachers on special assignment, all working in the Puyallup School District. And they work here tirelessly each and every day to create a welcoming, safe, and engaging, te engaging teaching and learning environment for each student that enters their schools daily. Educators strive to build positive relationships with their students that allow their students to develop a sense of belonging in their classroom and their school. These positive relationships also allow the educators to create the unique learning activities required to meet students' individual needs daily as the students strive to reach their individual potential. The capital levy on the ballot in November will allow the Puyallup School District to continue its emphasis on providing a safe learning environment for all its students and staff through upgrades to the school's safety and security systems, improvements to walking paths, parking lots, and the pickup and drop off traffic flow at schools, while also upgrading technology systems and networks to continue to provide the access to the curricular materials necessary to meet the students' needs for their learning. Also, this will provide upgrades to the outdoor areas such as playgrounds and athletic fields to meet the physical needs and the social and emotional needs our students possess as we strive to educate the whole child. As educators, we come to school each day excited to partner with our students in the learning process and continually strive to prepare our students for the next steps on their educational journey. We ask each of you attending tonight's informational open house to join us on this educational journey with our community's children. Educators are ready to move mountains daily for their students. And with your help, we can continue to move mountains and change the lives of our Puyallup School District students daily. I would ask you to please remember to vote and turn in your ballots by 8 p.m. on November 8th. And now, thank you and back to you, John. All right, well, thank you, Bob. Uh, the district is asking voters to consider a $125 million capital levy on uh, in November. And um, an in informational flyer should have arrived in most of our resident homes by now. We know that ballots are scheduled to arrive this week, actually. Um, we do wanna share a little bit um, information here. This graphic you see on the 
the screen um, helps to provide a visual for where these dollars are, are intended to go should the levy be successful. And um, I think uh, the, the actual video did a very nice job kind of running through each of these, uh, these buckets. But uh, we want to emphasize that the largest percentage of the levy is dedicated to safety, security, health, and wellness. And that's that 43% you see in the yellow or orange color. I would like to explain the difference between a levy and a bond. Uh, levies require a 50% simple majority to pass, while a bond requires a supermajority of 60%. A bond is generally used for new schools construction, while a capital levy is used for infrastructure improvements, repairs, and related needs that are not funded by the state. And uh, again, the, the levy, uh, we know that the levy previously um, that we had, we had run uh, it, back in February was part of a, a two levy proposition, one being our educational programs levy. So the next slide really talks a little bit more about um, the proposed capital levy in February. And um, while our EPNO levy did pass, the capital levy fell short. After serving our community and meeting with parent groups, the district did revise the levy to focus, the capital levy that is, to focus more on safety and security, as I mentioned. And uh, now we've reproposed uh, the levy in a modified proposal. The new proposal is informed by a study and survey that was completed by a third party who specializes in school district facility analysis. Uh, this study and survey included a review and rating of all the district facilities and provided a report of needs exceeding $500 million over the next 20 years. These needs ranged from building envelopes, windows, flooring, HVAC systems, lighting, just about everything in between. Um, our capital team worked very hard to identify the most critical needs that we would uh, like to address with this capital levy over the next six years. This work resulted in approximately 400 high priority projects that are included in the proposed levy. And while this is far short of the overall long-term needs of the district, uh, these projects will help to provide many of the most critical safety, security, and technology improvements that are needed. This next slide uh, represents all the schools in the school district. Uh, one of the feedback items that we received from our patrons, uh, the previous levy proposal, which did not pass, was that um, we just didn't quite know enough detail about the levy. You know, what's gonna happen at each school? Um, so where will our dollars actually go? Um, and so with that uh, feedback, our team then has listed the projects that are identified at each school site. We'll get into more of those details for region two here this evening, but the details for each school site can also be accessed on our district website under um, capital levy. Uh, we will uh, discuss, like I said, the region two areas uh, more in detail, but if you'd like to see any of the schools, you can just follow that drop down menu to see what's planned for each school site should the levy be uh, approved. As I noted earlier, the district projects are categorized into five buckets and uh, color coded. So the, uh, moving back to the first slide with the wheel graphic, uh, you'll see the categories listed again here in color. And these are security systems, uh, technology, um, HVAC related improvements and replacements, outdoor learning spaces and parking and traffic flow. And so within these five buckets, we'd like to address the different schools in region two and um, specifically what's, what's planned and get into some detail. Um, and again, please feel free to enter your questions into the chat at this time. Brady, if you'd like to take us on to the next uh, part of the pro presentation. Thank you, John. I wanted to share an overview of the schools that make up region two. Rogers High School is the resident high school for this region with the following feeder schools. These schools are Brulette Elementary, Carson Elementary, Desi Evans Elementary, Fir Grove Elementary, Woodland Elementary, Zeiger Elementary, Ballou Junior High, Stahl Junior High, and Walker High School. The following schools, marked with an asterisk on the slide, were recently constructed and are not in critical need of improvement supported by the proposed levy. We would like to now highlight specific project categories in detail that are included in the proposed levy. We'll be sharing information about safety, security, building, site, and traffic improvements. Margaret Larkey will highlight the technology improvement projects for each school. 
Details for each category will be provided in depth for Brulette Elementary, which will carry through the remainder of the slides Margaret and I share. The district was awarded a grant in December that currently is funding 10 new secure vestibules in the district. Brulette Elementary is one of the 10 grant funded secure vestibule projects. The proposed levy package includes an additional four new secure vestibules in the district. The new secure vestibules will provide for a secure single point of entry to our schools by directing any visitor to the main office for check-in and eliminating free access to our interior hallways. Brulette Elementary School will be receiving the following safety and security improvements as part of this levy proposal. Lockdown visual alert strobe lights will be installed in the large and loud spaces such as band rooms, gyms, and common spaces. They will provide a visual aid to staff and students in the event of a lockdown or shelter in place incident. Replacement of the intrusion alarm system will replace obsolete intrusion alarm system panel and alarm keypads, motion detectors, glass break detectors, and other components to protect students, staff, and property. Security camera life cycle replacements of interior and exterior cameras are included. The cameras are outdated and into life and we need to ensure camera coverage and connectivity to the network to maximize student and staff safety. The fire alarm system field device improvements play a big role for early detection and occupant notification in the event of a fire. The system is designed to evacuate staff, students, and community visitors upon detection of smoke. In the proposed levy, we include field devices, field device replacements of obsolete smoke detectors, heat detectors, pulse stations, and notification devices. The new devices would keep our systems compliant with the local and state code requirements while maintaining the safety of our students, staff, and community. Building site and traffic improvement projects include new paved walking paths. The current school site includes a gravel path around the grass play field. We live in the Pacific Northwest and it tends to rain quite a bit here. This causes these walking paths to be full of puddles and mud throughout most of the year. By paving these paths, it would allow for year round use by students and staff for recess, PE, along with the use by the community. Site parking lot improvements include seal coating the asphalt and restriping of the parking lot. Building siding replacement in limited areas is included along with cleaning and sealing the brick. This will prolong the life of our buildings. With equity in mind and worn and obsolete playground equipment, outdoor learning upgrades have been included in the levy package. We want to share, we want to make sure we are providing a safe and inclusive play environment for our students and community. New playground equipment includes a playground structure to accommodate all age groups, K through sixth grade, that would replace the existing worn and obsolete playground structure. Rubber tile playground fall protection would be installed beneath the new playground structure in lieu of wood play chips to provide a safe and inclusive play environment for students in the community. I will now turn over uh, to Margaret Larkey for technology improvements. Thanks, Brady. Many of the safety and security systems that Brady has mentioned are controlled by software and hardware that run on our networks. Every school has its own network which consists of wires and connectors, and that all schools are connected to the district-wide network, which in turn connects to the internet. So I have a question for you. Do you remember 1990? 32 years ago, Cheers was the hit TV show, Home Alone was number one movie, and Microsoft had just introduced Windows 3.0. That's the year that Brulette's network cabling was installed. It's a long time. So the network, up, the planned network upgrades for Roulette, along with a few other schools in this region, include new wiring that allows faster speeds, more connections to, uh, to new wireless access points, and a battery backup capability to keep critical systems running in the event of a power failure. Classrooms will have 65 inch touchscreen displays and portable teacher sound systems installed to replace the outdated smart boards and um, projectors and overhead projectors, excuse me. Uh, it, these interactive displays increase student engagement through lessons that enable drawing and writing and collaborating right on the screen. Um, Brulette, as well as every other school in the, in the district will get a new phone system if 
if the levy is, is passed. A new, uh, our current phone system is about 20 years old. And that means we can only purchase refurbished parts for that system. A new phone system will allow conference calling, video and voice communications, and the ability to use a district phone number from a computer, which are pretty, you know, pretty uh, expected functionality in this day. Brady, Brady, back to you. Thanks. As, hi as highlighted in the previous slide, the following safety and security improvements are proposed in the levy for Carson Elementary School. These include lockdown visual alert strobe lights, intrusion alarm system replacements. Oh, sorry here. I just had a technical difficulty here. Uh, stand by. Uh, intrusion alarm system replacements and security camera life cycle replacements. The intercom system upgrade will allow for standardization and updates uh, and updates the building intercom system to provide efficient and rapid communication with the ability to trigger pre-recorded messages between classrooms and the main office for campus lockdown, shelter in place, and other emergency communications. Other safety improvements include the fire alarm system field device replacements and fire sprinkler system upgrades. Moving into the building site and traffic improvements, our study and survey noted that we have areas that need building siting replacement, we will also be cleaning and sealing the brick to prolong the life of the building. And site improvements would include the playfield paved walking paths and outdoor learning upgrades to include new playground equipment with rubber tile playground fall protection. Margaret? Well, the network at Carson is newer generation, so the newer than Brulette. So the bulk of the planned work at this school is to increase the wireless network capabilities and replace the outdated classroom technology with, again, the touchscreen displays and teacher uh, sound systems that I mentioned earlier. And the enhanced audio capability, so I just want to touch on that a minute, uh, enhanced audio and microphones for teachers also increase student engagement because it ensures that teacher that students can hear teachers regardless of where they are in the classroom. Uh, and this also is really beneficial and supports the teachers because it prevents them from straining their voice and uh, uh, requiring them to project their voice all the way to the back of the classroom. Um, and then the phone system is, again, that's something that will be in all the schools. Brady? Thanks. Woodland Elementary will be receiving a door entry intercom system lifecycle upgrade. The system is critical as it allows for the office staff to speak and visually identify visitors prior to buzzing them into the secure vestibule that will in turn direct them into the office for check-in. The following safety and security projects are also included for the site that would include the secure vestibule, lockdown visual alert strobes, lights, intrusion alarm system replacements, security camera life cycle replacements, intercom system upgrades, and fire alarm system field device improvements. The building and site and traffic improvements for Woodland Elementary will, will include parking lot improvements with seal coating the asphalt and restriping of the existing parking lot. We also know that improvements are needed for parent drop off and pickup along with additional parking. Included in the levy, we would include a larger drop off and pickup area along with additional parking on site. While we are paving on site, a new paved walking path around the playfield will be provided. Building improvements include heating and cooling system replacements and cleaning and sealing of the brick. Outdoor learning upgrades would also include a new playground structure and new rubber tile playground fall protection to replace the existing wood chips. Margaret? Uh, like Brulette, Woodland's network was installed in the 1990s using the CAT5 technology, which was standard at the time. That technology was considered obsolete in 2001. Woodland will have their network upgraded in the same manner as Brulette, and the classroom technology will also be updated with the interactive screens, enhanced audio, and teacher microphones. And again, I want to just reiterate that the, um, these instructional tools support different learning styles by providing clearer images and video, and of course, the improved sound quality. Brady? Now on to Zyger Elementary School. 
this is one of our prototypical schools with the same floor plan as Woodland Elementary. The following security and safety projects include a new secure vestibule, lockdown visual alert strobe lights, intrusion alarm system replacement, security camera lifecycle replacement, door entry intercom lifecycle upgrades, the intercom system update, fire alarm system field device improvements, and fire sprinkler system upgrades. There are still many building improvements to be addressed that include replacement of the heating and cooling system equipment, the new paved walking path around the play field, and parking lot improvements. For outdoor learning upgrades, we will be replacing the existing wood play chips with new rubber tile playground fall protection under the existing play structure. Margaret? Okay. Probably noticing a trend here, Zeiger's network is also outdated, built around the same time. You know, the, the 1990s were a very good, good time for uh, internet being or network being put in. Um, so Zeiger will have their network uh, updated as well. And they will have classroom technology, as I mentioned, the interactive displays and the sound systems. The planned work at Zeiger also, I just, and this is in the other schools as well, but I just want to point out that um, one of the updates in the classroom is uh, the for the screen sharing technology for the interactive whiteboard. So um, we are so teachers are able to move around the classroom without being tethered to a a, a board, and they can display their their uh, you know what they have on their screen regardless of where they are in the classroom. And the the school uh, Zyger will also have a new cabling run to the wireless access points. So that way um, there'll be more capability for you know more more bandwidth for the wireless as well. Um, these are these are things that are in if you see them on the other on the previous schools, it's the same the same type of work. I'm just kind of highlighting it different in different schools so that you it's not the same the exact same uh, spiel the whole time. Brady, thank you. <clears throat> Blue Junior High has additional improvements needed in the existing portions of the building. These were not part of the recent construction that included a classroom library addition, auxiliary gym, and addition of interior finishes that updated flooring and wall paneling in specific areas of the building. Our current grant includes a new secure vestibule for Blue Junior High. Additional security and safety improvements that are also included in the levy for the site include the lockdown visual alert strobes, intrusion alarm system replacements, security camera lifecycle replacements, door entry intercom lifecycle upgrade, and the fire alarm system field device replacement. Building and site and traffic improvements include the roofing replacements that have not been completed and seal coating and restriping of the existing parking lot. Blue Junior High will receive a new all-weather track in the district. We have included all-weather tracks at all of our junior high schools in the district that will provide year-round use for PE and athletic programs and the community throughout the year. Margaret? With the recent addition, Baloo, or some parts of Baloo, have had their network wiring updated already. So the planned improvements here would be completing those upgrades so that internet access is consistent across all the classrooms, um, and then installing new wireless access points. We'll also be updating the wireless screen sharing technology that I mentioned before so that teachers can teach anywhere. Um, do want to point out that, that that instructional tool is very helpful for classroom management and also for increasing collaboration. So students can also show their work or presentation right from their own device on that screen. So it's a nice way to bring the whole class together. Brady? Thanks. So what's new at Stahl Junior High, you may ask? We just recently completed a classroom addition, commons addition, and interior finishes that included new carpet and wall paneling in select areas. We also installed a new secure vestibule at the main entry to the school. Further security and safety project, projects are needed to standardize our safety enhancements, which include the following, the lockdown visual alert strobe lights, intrusion alarm system replacement, security camera lifecycle replacement, and the fire alarm system field device improvements. Building improvements of the heating and cooling system will replace end-of-life equipment. 
site parking improvements at Stahl Junior High include seal coating the asphalt and restriping of the parking lot. For outdoor learning upgrades, we've included a new all-weather track. Margaret? <clears throat> Internet usage, as I'm sure you're all aware, has increased dramatically over the last few years. And in the school si system, um, things like digital curricula, collaboration software, and video conferencing have become the norm. And right now, less than 40% of students in the Puyallup School District have sufficient bandwidth, internet bandwidth, within their classrooms. So we are, we are aiming to, to change that. Most students and virtually all staff also have personal cellular or you know, personal devices, their cell phone, et cetera, that may, want, that may be connected to the, to the uh, school Wi-Fi and that increases the demand further. The stalls network will be upgraded and uh, the planned work also includes the cabling to the wireless access points to, to improve the wireless network as well. Brady? Yes, Walker High School is our alternative school. The following security and safety enhancements would include the lockdown visual alert strobe lights, intrusion alarm system replacement, security camera lifecycle replacement, door entry intercom lifecycle upgrade, and the fire alarm system field device improvements. Building improvements will upgrade the heating and cooling system along with upgrading interior emergency exit lighting. Site parking lot improvements will provide seal coating of the asphalt and restriping of the parking lot. Margaret? Well, like several other schools in the region, uh, Walker's network is outdated and not keeping up with student and staff needs. Also, the Puyallup Open Doors program is now housed at Walker, and they've started exploring hybrid classes which, in which some students are on site in the classroom and others are remote. Um, that also increases the internet access demands. Um, I recently actually learned that Walker was the first secondary school to, to uh, have all students receive district issued computers. So the first for the one-to-one -one program. Um, and I, th I thought this might be a good time to let you know that um, when Puyallup School District students enter the 10th grade, they receive their forever computer. And that is the computer that they'll use to see them through, to, through graduation. Now we purchase pretty, very good devices um, and we maintain and repair them as needed so that they last six years, which is a pretty long time. With over 30 or with almost 30,000 computers in our fleet, we replace over 4,000 computers every year. Innovations in laptop computing, things such as webcams, graphics, longer lasting batteries, touch screens, and styluses, st stylus pens, Th these all improve the learning environment, they foster creativity, and they really position students for post-graduation career or college. So it's, it is important to keep up with um, the latest, you know, the current technology for, for devices as well. Brady? Okay, now for our, our Region 2 feeder school, Rogers High School. We have many of the same systems for security and safety enhancements to the site that include the lockdown visual alert strobe lights, intrusion alarm system replacement, security camera lifecycle replacement, door entry intercom lifecycle upgrades, fire alarm system field device improvements, and the intercom system update. The building site and traffic improvements would include heating and cooling system upgrades through the existing building and clean seal of the brick, lighting upgrades that include new exit lighting through emergency exit lighting throughout the, the campus. Parking lot improvements would include the seal of the asphalt and seal coating of the asphalt and restriping. Something new that for outdoor learning upgrades is the addition of two additional tennis courts to allow for tournaments to be held at the site. The additional courts will also be added to Ember Ridge High School and Puyallup High School as part of the proposed levy. Margaret? Well, Rogers High School right now houses the largest number of students in the district with over 1,700. And its network is running on an obsolete Cat5 set uh, wiring. 
So we, uh, now we did perform some interim work this past summer, summer of 2022, to improve the connection to the wireless action, access points. However, to get really the full benefit of that work, the rest of the network needs to have new wiring installed. So that is the planned work um, at Rogers High School, as well as more new wireless access points. And now I will hand the presentation over to Laura Marco, the Assistant Superintendent of Business Services. Thank you, Margaret, and good evening, everyone. Um, so why is this levy needed? Um, our regular state funding and our educational programs and operations levy only cover our day-to-day -day operations, regular repairs, and routine maintenance. That funding is not adequate for the replacement or major repair to our critical systems and infrastructure. In Washington state, school districts must rely on their communities for that funding through a capital levy. This graph shows the disparity between the district's needs over the next six years, as identified by the study and survey mentioned earlier by Dr. Palm, and how much of those needs would actually be addressed by this levy. And as you can see, our needs of about 206 million far outweigh the 125 million that we would be collecting from this levy. So you may ask, why are we not asking for the full 206 million in this capital levy? And um, you know, the district is very sensitive to adding to the tax burden of our community. We don't take this decision lightly and we try to balance the needs of the district with the tax rate that we think our community will support. Next slide, please. Okay, so speaking of tax rates, um, this graphic compares Puyallup's current and proposed tax rates to those of our neighboring school districts. Um, these rates are what is paid per $1,000 of assessed value. And the total tax rate is made up of the rate to service our bond debt and amount for our current educational programs and operations levy and a technology or a capital levy if a district has one, which is what we're talking about tonight. Puyallup's current tax rate is $4.26 per $1,000 of assessed value. Passage of this levy would add 82 cents to the total rate. However, that the net increase in the rate would only be about 30 cents because we are paying off our bond debt as well. So we see a significant drop in our bond debt in, um, in year 2023, which absorbs much of the increase related to the addition of the capital levy. But look at the rates of our surrounding districts. Even with passage of this levy, we would have a higher tax rate than only two of our neighboring school districts, Franklin Pierce and Orden. The other four districts, Bethel, Sumner, Bonnie Lake, Fife, and Tacoma all have higher tax rates. So this really shows that we are asking our community to support funding at a level that our surrounding communities have already supported. So as I said before, we are very mindful of our tax rates and we want to um, address the needs of the district while minimizing the financial impacts on our community. So we just wanna make um, sure to note that our community members who are low income seniors or those with disabilities may qualify for a property tax exemption or deferral. And those interested can visit the Pierce County Elections website at www.piercecountywa.gov, or you can call them directly at 253-798-2169 for more information on the eligibility criteria and the application process. So what happens if the capital levy does not pass? Um, you know, the projects we have outlined in this levy package are targeted to provide a safer, more secure, and more suitable learning environment for our students and staff. If this levy doesn't pass, it doesn't mean that those critical needs go away. And as I mentioned before, um, districts rely on their communities for this support. We may be able to delay some projects, but as we all know, when you put something off, you end up paying, uh, you know, it costs more in the end. Um, so we will have to find a way to address these safety, you know, the most uh, critical safety needs and our um, failing systems, um, which unfortunately would mean more, you know, less, less money going um, into our classrooms. And now I will send it back to Dr. Palm to wrap up the presentation. 
Great, thank you, Laura. Well, before we respond to the chat, uh, I did want to uh, mention that uh, our goal this evening, really, or this evening and in our next presentations over the next uh, tomorrow and the next week, we're having three more that are in person, uh, really is to try to help um, folks understand the facility needs that are present district-wide, um, certainly focusing on the home schools. We've done a lot of presentations at school buildings um, and with, with some community groups. I would add that uh, the district is significantly limited on what we're allowed to do. Uh, we're allowed to share information, uh, but we aren't allowed to advocate during the school day for sure. Employees have a lot of limits on what they can do and say while they're um, working. In addition to that, we are allowed one uh, uh, large scale mailer, uh, which I'd referenced earlier. Uh, we, we really aren't allowed to do much more than that. Um, so we rely on our staff and um, our community to share information. And so we're trying to uh, provide that in a lot of different ways. We also really encourage everyone to register to vote if you haven't already. Encourage uh, those who are eligible to also register. Uh, we know that the voter turnout back in February was uh, fairly low, which is typical for uh, you know, not a general election uh, a month. And from that, we, we know actually the voter turnout was about 32% in Pierce County. Um, we are hopeful that it's, we, we do believe it's be, be much higher. And we're also very hopeful that our school families will be um, voting at a high rate. So we're encouraging folks to become knowledgeable about the facts and to share information with family and friends. Uh, all this, all, each of the school sites has the video that we had shared earlier posted, um, as well as all the information about each school site. In addition to that, we have a capital levy um, uh, link to, on our webpage as well. So with that, um, I would like to go ahead and move over to the chat and uh, respond to a few questions. I think Laura actually already did. Uh, the first question I had here uh, was uh, regarding Will the district have a secondary option or plan in place if this levy fails? And um, you know, we, we can only run uh, two levies in a cap in an actual calendar year, um, so we're pretty limited there as well. It takes a long time to set up a levy and have the board approve uh, putting that on the ballot. We have a lot of resolutions, et cetera, to go through before things can get approved. So um, nothing would be is planned at this point as a follow up. Uh, to this levy pr uh, proposal, although the school board would have to reconsider um, things uh, moving forward. So as Laura mentioned, um, when districts don't have um, capital levies, which the only district on our surrounding borders that doesn't right now is, is Ording and Puyallup, um, then we, we have to um, try to meet needs with uh, the existing funding that we do have. So that'll be our state funding and our um, local educational programs and operations funding. Uh, which um, most of the funding for our school district, just like most, is wrapped up in staffing. About 85% of our overall um, expenditures are for staff. So generally what districts do is you have to make some decisions on what's most important, of course, and what's critical, and, and go ahead and uh, um, have to cut in other areas in order to, to support. If you need to replace a roof, you got to replace a roof, et cetera. Um, so the other... Um, question was regarding the levy uh, in February. What did we do to, um, uh, to get information or, or ask for feedback? So what we did was we did put together a community survey uh, that went out from our communications department um, and uh, we received, I believe it was about 930 or 920 responses uh, from the community. In addition to that, um, I spent some time at some PTA, PTO meetings around the district and just asked for some feedback from uh, some of the folks that were uh, engaged in those groups. And um, yeah, we, we just received real similar feedback from folks. As, uh, one, it was uh, still during the pandemic and there were, um, you know, just a lot of uh, negative uh, kind of uh, vibes, I guess, going around uh, the community during the pandemic is before the mask mandate was lifted for schools. Uh, so you know, some considerations there that we think the climate uh, certainly is a lot different right now than it was back then. And uh, uh, further, it was uh, more related to, you know, we just didn't have enough information uh, to really feel like we could even share information with, with our friends and family. Um, so when people asked us, one, how much is it going to cost? Or, you know, what's really going to be done at my school? 
um, the information wasn't as readily available. So we went back uh, to our team and that what you saw today in this presentation really is, is a response to, um, to that feedback. So we we really feel like we've got a pretty detailed um, sort of line item uh, approach to uh, what's, what's the part of the levy moving forward. Um, next question is how much of this levy will be used for improvements around each school to allow people living with a disability to have better inclusivity opportunities on all campuses in the district included uh, students, visitors, teachers, and parents. Um, you know, I know we can focus on students um, through the play areas, but you know, I'm gonna lob this over to Brady if you wouldn't mind maybe a few comments on uh, inclusivity um, of our students and, and patrons with disabilities. Yeah, I think that, that uh, this includes obviously the inclusive play for the playgrounds. So obviously putting in the rubber tiles underneath the playgrounds at the, at the sites that we have uh, called out um, here, which is a total of 15 sites that will be receiving um, rubber play tiles within the district. Um, that equates to about $2 million worth of investment that would be uh, that's put into the levy right now for those sites. Uh, on top of that, we have a, a, another close to $2 million worth of pave, paving work that's going to be done to provide the paved walking paths throughout the district. And then we have obviously the, the parking lot improvements um, that are included with additional sidewalks that'll be added at some of our sites uh, that have been called out in the levy um, for right-of-way improvements um, that will provide you know better walkability to our schools that currently have gravel shoulders and no sidewalks to them. Great, thanks Brady. Yep. And when you mentioned the, the play areas and so we we're talking about students with various disabilities, including wheelchair um, access, they'll be able to get in and out of those play areas on various pieces of equipment, et cetera. Yes, currently they're not, it's hard for them to get into those areas because there's wood play chips, which is an uneven surface. Sometimes there's a cement border around our play equipment. So by filling that in and providing a level flat service um, that's ADA compliant, they'll be able to, they're in a wheelchair, roll up onto it and play. Um, if, the, if they have other uh, crutches or something they'll be able to get on easily and play and then with the new playground equipment that it's included at the elementary sites that will include more inclusive play for all all people as well so we'll make sure that the, the play equipment meets the needs of all students kindergarten through 12th grade and that, I don't want to leave out you know the all-weather tracks at our uh, junior highs are also another thing that's important and used by the community and students um, and you know all of our tracks in the district right now at the at the junior high level are red cinder tracks. And so they're dirt, they can be a little bit uneven, they can puddle and everything else. The new rubberized all weather track will also help with uh, inclusivity uh, and opportunities for all to participate uh, in those athletic uh, events. Great, thanks Brady. Um, I also see a question on uh, the boat, let's see here. Besides the, the, this webinar, how is the district advertising to voters the need to pass the levy? And secondly, what, what this levy would mean to them, the district teachers, students, and parents, because a large portion of voters may not have children attending public schools. You know, I'm, I'm gonna log this to Laura because Laura, she, she says this better than I do. I think, you know, the value of, of investing in schools um, for those, especially you know, that might not have kids, um, and then how else we might be um, trying to communicate this information. So Laura, would you mind taking that question? Sure, Dr. Palm, thank you. Um, yeah, we get, we, we, get, we get this question quite a lot. And I always say as a community, it's really important to support our students because great schools increase our property values. They decrease crime. They encourage families and other residents to be engaged in the community. Um, and a really good example of this that we see is the real estate signs that you see in front of homes for sale in Puyallup that advertise Puyallup schools um, because it's a selling point. Um, so for those people that may not have kids in the district, um, it's also something to, you know, it, it does increase your property values and, and maintain your investment as well. But, you know, I always say what better investment is there than our students, so. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. A um, couple of questions related to students with disabilities and technology uh, for access. And we, I know we mentioned the voice uh, for the teachers, the Audible classroom amplification systems. Uh, Margaret, you have any more technology information we could share? 
Yeah, I mean, and Kelly actually put this in the in the chat, or one of our special education directors. And yes, the upgrades, the interactive displays will give uh, students a an, another way to demonstrate their learning. Um, also, the network upgrades, just frankly, just with more bandwidth and with all the interactive um, videos and just the uh, me multimedia that assistive technology uses we'll be able to better support that, support more students with greater needs. And I just want to put a plug in, if you'd like to see the interactive displays, if your school doesn't have it and you want to take a look at it or um, next week at the in-house uh, or excuse me, at the open house in-person sessions, uh, we will have the new line interactive displays. You can touch it and play with it and draw on it, et cetera. And the teacher sound systems, the Juno sound systems as well. Great, thank you. Um, so we a couple of times we mentioned the in-person um, open houses. So Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week, all at six o'clock. Uh, on uh, on Tuesday, we're at Glacier View uh, Junior High School, so Region One on Tuesday. Um, we'll uh, again we'll have groups of staff there, uh, some building staff. Uh, it, it, well, not only at Glacier View, but other buildings within the district there, assisting. And um, and then on Wednesday, we'll be at Baloo Junior High School, same same setup. Um, and uh, then at uh, Thursday, we'll be at Allen Junior High School. And so hopefully we'll, we'll have uh, folks um, on site and we can continue to engage and provide information. And then like Margaret said, actually see and handle some of the um, technology and other, other uh, items that we've got uh, as part of this plan. Um, let's see here, let's see if there's any more questions in our chat. And thank you for leaving email. So if we don't get answer the question properly, we make sure we can get back to you via email. Well, I'm gonna there, uh, we're there. at six fifty two. Um, I'm gonna kind of go back to the panel here and see if you any any of you'd like to offer anything else that we haven't covered that you think ought to be mentioned. John, I'll ask you. There's one more question on there that was asked that someone asked about uh, children that have sensory issues. Will the playgrounds have things for them? Absolutely. That's something that we make sure of um on our playgrounds so there's inclusive play for all kindergarten through sixth grade so if you haven't been out to any of our new schools um, i encourage you to go out and visit one of them um, and if you have children take your children there and, and check them out they're uh the pretty impressive play structures that are there and the ones that we're including in the levy would would meet that same uh, level of play um, at the other schools from an equity standpoint mm -hmm. great thanks brady um, Margaret, any other um, technology related information you think we should make sure and share? Well, I do. I would like to just mention, um, you know, speaking of equity, we are a one to one district. That means that every student, every staff member in the district have a district issued computer device laptop. Um, we've been that way for about four years or so. That was largely due um, to, you know, planning of uh, folks in the technology department, but also community support as well as board support. So uh, this, the, the uh, school community has a history of, of, you know, supporting technology in the district and that is very much appreciated. And, um, we wouldn't be where we are now without it. Uh, the, the, the levy also includes some more back end, kind of not real visible uh, projects for upgrading core network infrastructure um, that are, you know that the schools depend upon. Didn't go into great detail on that, um, but that is those are. I mean, if you want to ask about that at the open house next week, I'm happy to to bore you with the gory technical details. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, we, you know, the, I see the question follow up questions. Can the office of o OSPI, the office of uh, superintendent of public instruction, assist um, with advertising? No, we, you know, state fund. It comes down to tax dollars. Uh, really, can't be used to advocate for uh, school issues. So, um, you know, in addition to that, we've got a pretty strong web presence. We're using social media to get information out. We're um, sending information out through Parent Square, which is our communication platform through all of our schools. 
Um, and, uh, and then we're, again, trying to hold some community meetings. Uh, we know that we're not gonna get to everybody, um, and, uh, but we're gonna do our best to, to do uh, what we can to share, share information. And we'll just, again, we're relying on uh, our school connected folks to, uh, to help with that. So Laura, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap this up? Uh, well, I could just add that um, ballots must be postmarked by November 8th or returned to a ballot drop box by 8 p.m. that night. And there's three ballot drop boxes in um, the Puyallup area at the Puyallup Library, the South Hill Library, and then also at Edgewood C Hall. Great. All right. Well, with that, um, again, if anything comes up that you want to uh, send, just feel free to email um, our uh, district. You can email any of us directly or our communications department uh, to get uh, any more information that you'd like to have. Uh, with that, it's 6.55, and we're going to go ahead and uh, close this uh, meeting down, uh, reminding folks that it was recorded and would be available um, online beginning tomorrow. Thanks again for joining us, and have a great evening.